really be picked. And then someone else picked it up and failed on it. Yeah, that right? was Rascal. Rascal? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Not good. We'll so, have to wait and see if 369 has got what it takes. This is a lesson on how to int the draft in one pick. And uh, they've done it. Although, it is certainly sticking with their you know long-range pick potential, as the culling can certainly lock down a target that has been uh, slowed or rooted or stunned in place. But top esports are all in on the mid game. FPX, very similar situation as uh, it was, in fact, the Renekton in the mid lane, as all of the magic damage is being relied upon by the Nidalee. And this is something that uh, our friend LS has spoken about many, many times. It's uh, sort of having. It's like a Karthus comp, but with Nidalee instead, right? Yeah. You know, you, you incentivize building armor so that Nidalee can do true damage in the mid game. And we'll see whether that's something that they are going to be able to capitalize on. But uh, this Lucian is just going to be ganked over and over again and not going to be able to bully the Jace as much as they would otherwise like. So uh, 369, I mean, they saw the comp. And I think that, like, most people can understand that there is a high chance that Doinby is going to be playing the Renekton. Yeah. Like, Khan's a Korean. We don't like Renekton. You know? We don't like him. Yes. Anymore. And uh, Khan might still be in that camp. Not entirely sure. He only recently did join in with uh, FBX, but let's see how this game goes as we get into game number four. All right, FBX with another chance. Now that our uh, top Lucian has been picked up. See whether 369 can show us exactly why the Lucian has been prioritized. But I do like the draft out of FBX. I think that, uh, like you were saying, the Nidalee, very, very strong. And uh, Top were thinking about whether or not Khan was going to face check into that brush. He didn't. And uh, looking over Top's side, yes, their mid game is still very strong, but FBX is also geared around that with uh, the Aphelios to allow them to scale a little bit later. So let's just see how it goes. I just uh, look at the player cams, and Knight is just laughing, and he's got a giant smile on his face. It's clear that the players are having a lot of fun as they're playing these games, so that's always nice to see. He did go for Unsealed Spellbook in this game. Just yep. taking a look at some of the other runes here. Don't really see anything too strange. No scorches, even for the Jace up on the top side. You, you generally see scorch, but perhaps in this case, wants to have a little bit more scaling as it's not the easiest lane for him into the Lucian. Yep, 369 gets to this lane and starts bopping it around, as you can see. Throwing abilities into the minion wave to make sure that he has this shove as early as possible. And we'll be able to lock down all of these creeps. Khan's going to be absolutely fine, though, as he does get the first blood as far as damage is concerned onto the 369 with his Shock Blast. See how Khan navigates this one as Yuyanja gets himself into the brush. Chris, he's going to have a rocket grab. He could uh, possibly move Yuyanja around, but there's the play. And uh, LWX taking a fair bit of damage here. Crisp, not going to be throwing out any hooks because as soon as it's on cooldown, you are a sitting duck. And uh, the Blitzcrank not working so far. But Thresh Callista is an absolute bully lane. And uh, you're not going to be doing much level 1 as an Aphelios. Yeah, it's a pretty fun time. Down there in the bottom side, you got hooks versus hooks. Who's going to do that better is the real question. Although the play is definitely the, the best level 1 skill. Although I don't know if you can say that against Rocket Grab. I guess Rocket Grab would be better. But they, anyway, they do have the push coming in down here. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> really wanted that minion. Sets it up pretty nicely for LWX to lock it down. So there we go. That's why. That's why you go for the hook onto the creep. Oh boy. GLP picked up here by Knight. Yep, had that one for a little while, but the trouble bubble goes wide. Tian. Now a possible chance to look at Knight for a kill. And Knight moves on over at exactly the right time. Kars is in here. Good avoidance on the Spear. He's going to be not going to quite get into slice range. Primal Surge helping keep Tian healthy. No one's going to be walking over any traps just yet. And it looks like Kars is just going to be uh, pulling off a bit of a drive-by here in the mid lane as Doinbeat looks to stun up Knight. Kars keeps on walking. <laughs> Says, like, you deal with that crocodile, <laughs> man. Come on, I got places to be. 
Yeah, he has to move to the other side of the map to pick up the other Scuttle Crab because Nidalee was just dominating him over there. Tien's even going to get more aggressive, as you can, on the Nidalee. Take away the Krugs here. 369 is playing under turret, has to ward it down, knows there's the danger of having a Nidalee in his face very soon. So he's even going to push out the minions at the same time and feel safe with the ward. Playing that defensive kind of situation pretty well. It's 369. Yep. He's uh, running out of mana just a little bit here, but sitting on a couple of biscuits is going to help him. Khan taking a bit of uh, piercing light damage. Always the dream to be able to hit the minion wave and the opponent. As we are ardent blazing it as best as we can. Another playback here on the bottom side. LWX with his Gravitum going to get some stuns, but... Jackie Love locked in place. Yuyanja looking for that death sentence. Which target he going oh. for? Is that's the return hook? Anything you can do, I can do better. Says Chris. As Knight goes down extraordinarily low. Didn't have to flash though there in the mid lane as we head back down bot. Yep, nicely done by the side of Chris. You know he understands this matchup very well. If the Thresh gets even a little bit too aggressive, you can really punish him by getting under turret and pulling. Yep. Top lane, just, just going even. There's really not that much fighting actually happening up here. There's not much trading. You can see that Kondo has used all of his stacks of the Corrupting Potion. There has been a lot of focus up here from the junglers, at least, as here comes Doing Me. Yeah, Khan run out, ran out of mana. One more auto attack, but Doing Me flashes forward, culls the Meek. And uh, Lucian Top continues to be terrible. Yeah, get dunked on. Yeah, basically, as Karsha. There's no flash for doing B, but he is Renekton, so. Yeah, acceleration gate comes out. 369 going to be able to teleport back to the lane. So, not going to suffer too much on the farm values. And Knight does get a fair bit of time here with the mid outer turret. I mean, that's about all you can say. You can see Doinby. He's at 44 CS. He's absolutely fine. Teleport comes back in from him also. And uh, therefore. No harm, no foul. Doesn't miss out on anything. Just grabs himself first blood. Bilgewater Cutlass completed for the Renekton, so he'll be able to slow down Knight if he feels the need. And, uh, yeah. Why did you pick Lucian? <laughs> Good question. I don't know. Come hopefully, on, Valdanalus, tell us. Hopefully he can prove somehow that it's, uh, that it's better than we've seen and unleash the true potential of team fight Lucian skating around the team fights and doing some insane double taps and crits and stuff like that. Yep, I think the best Lucian in the world is Chinese, you know? It's uh, it's definitely Uzi in my opinion. So, uh, his Lucian has always been absolutely fantastic, but uh, that was a different time. Tian up toward the top side. Uh, yeah, top lane Lucian, guys. The Dream avoids a lot of that damage, though, as the culling what? goes into the Nether Realm. And Doinby's here once again. Bubble going to go just a little bit short. Do Dragon here, I think. Yeah. Not going to. I mean, probably going to take the red buff as uh, Knight. Does have his own cleanse. He picked up another one, though, as the damage from the Paddle Star is pretty dangerous. And uh, red buff is going to at least be taken. No Paddle Star available here from Knight just yet, as Doinby does body block. Kasa takes that Bramble back and might be able to move over to the Dragon. But as you can see with all of the attention topside, uh, Crisp and LWX are not allowed to play the game. And they are zoned away from everything. Maybe Lucian's just a bait to get everybody to focus on the top side, and then you just I mean, three... win bot side hard. Maybe that's oh the reason why you pick the, the, the Lucian top. That's insane. It's like three turret plates for free and close to a 20 CS. Uh, advantage. I like it. Maybe that's what this top Lucian's doing. It's drawing the attention of the opposition so that Jackie Love can carry. Exactly. That's that's the five head that we were looking for. It. And uh, Karsa never went for the dragon. I mean, it's an Infernal Drake first, which would be really nice to get for your three carries on your side, but he prioritized getting the red buff instead. Which, yep. I mean, I suppose eventually, if Tien is going to spend his entire jungling life in this game up in the top side of the map, then he can just do it a little bit later, as he will now. But it's not a bad trade for FPX, because they get this uh, Rift Herald extremely early, probably going to push in the top lane, I'd imagine, especially because the Lucian already is not doing so well. So 
Should be some pretty free plates up there. Yep, speaking of free plates, Knight gonna grab one as well as the Trouble Bubble doesn't land onto the Crocodile. It's a big target, but uh, not going to hit just yet. 100 gold, approximately the lead here for FBX as it stands, as Kass is looking to try and change that. Yu Yan just straight underneath, gets the double play, LWX just dead before he could really do anything, and Fate's Call is going to reset the turret aggro. Kassa takes the lantern, a stunning dive Easy. from Top Esports, and they'll take first turret out of this one as well. Your Herald be damned. Yeah, the thing about Blitzcrank is that, especially in situations like this, a rocket grab is going to do zero, right? You're not. Yeah. When they're all on top of you, it doesn't do anything. It, it, it CCs the other guy for 0.5 seconds, right? So a really nicely executed dive. They're forced underneath the turret by the positioning of Karza. So we got a little trade here in the mid lane. Oh, bubble. Knight turning this one around nicely. Branded health. Spear is going to go wide. Portal jump. Not going to be able to secure. And, uh, the culling. It's just going to clear out a mini wave. Good relentless pursuit to get out of the way of the empowered shock blast. 7CS is the lead here for Calm, though, so the Lucian top is still not working. So thankfully, Yanja and, uh, and Jackie Love exist. And uh, Kasa comes in, picks up Tarot Aggro, even takes that lantern really nicely. Yanja's just super good at Thresh, man. He's yeah. really, really good at this champion. All these uh, LPL supports are just awesome at yeah. Thresh. Like, the Thresh priority. <laughs> in this tournament has been through the roof. Oh, the, oh hook. the hook out of the lantern, but the playback crisp is dead. And they oh. land the hook as well. <laughs> Tian in trouble, but Doimbi gets through. Yuyanja goes golden. He is 100% getting the player yeah. of the game Can I just for this write game. Him down yeah, now? just write it down now, dude. <laughs> he is so damn good. Four to one now for Top Esports, and it's looking like this series might be ending a little bit sooner than you guys otherwise want. Yeah, I mean, just all of a sudden, it, it was only two plays, right? And we were looking at the top lane, and we were like, ah, oh, Lucian's on this, Lucian's on that. And it just didn't matter because actually the meme that we were saying came true. All the focus on the bottom side is getting top esports so far ahead. They're able to dive there. They easily rotate up top side and stop a dive on the top. I think FPX, if they were going to go for a dive, they had to do it sooner than after the bottom turret is dead, okay? Because the Thresh is going to be there. He's got Moby Boots. Nianza, just the mechanics, like, literally perfect. I mean, he, yeah. What do you, what, what else can you say about that Thresh play, right? This guy is simply carrying his team here in the early game. Oh, Kasa, a very early subjugation, and that means that he's going to be very tanky. 369 gets himself a kill. That's why you pick Top Lucian, because you know that you can catch out a Nidalee uh, and bait them with your trundle. That might be the, the plan there. But all memes aside, 369 has actually been the benefactor of a fair bit and now has himself a uh, little bit of a gold bounty as well. Bilgewater Cutlass there from Doinby onto 369, but that's not going to lock down a Lucian by any means. And now Yu Yanja looking for what? Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> Not the first time he's done this. this exactly, series. that is like the the LWX classic play. LWX, they're just I don't know what's going on. All of a sudden, they lose two team fights, and now people are just running, you know, That's running down, running top, it down, running like, it down in the river, just getting caught, running left it down and right. mid. Like just watch this again. I mean, we don't even have to see anything. At first, you're like, oh, Chris, wow, but then you end up flash oh. play hook perfect, gets the first one, follows it up, stopwatch, perfect timing. And then he's going to play and, and gets the playback. I, I think he catches another one. No. <laughs> well, he still did so much stuff. Carson, let's watch great the in parade. Yep. By the way, eight out of eight for sure for this one. <laughs> yeah, I'll, give it, I'll give it that. Like, you, you take away, you, you subjugate Doin B. Uh, he's dead, by the way. Yep, truly really subjugated. Nice. Uh, might be dead too, though, as Tien Ooh, should. Oh, sleep. that was incredible. The trouble level, fantastic. The insta cleanse on something uh, was pretty good too. Might have cleansed a red buff. Maybe. Not sure. No red buff on TM. So. Does he sometimes you just want to press cleanse? Oh, he has Nimbus Cloak. So, of course, you yeah. use it for the movement. Yeah, that's speed, cool. so no. It was a good idea. Tactical play. Gets him out there. And you know what's great about this for top esports is that now that they're ahead, their composition is so good against what FBS oh, have, yeah. right? They're going to be, once again, great at slowing down the enemy team, stopping engages, kiting them down. It looks very similar to uh, game three, except, you know, different champions, but a very similar idea in terms of what the composition does against what FPX is bringing. 
Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. So he's dead. like, what? <laughs> well, he does flash on top of Jackie Love, but Jackie Love's still probably going to be able to do this. Gets the rent. Now Khan able to lock down that kill. Yu Yanja not going to go for that 1v1, but he has backup incoming. Blade of the Rune King there gets him a bunch of extra movement speed. There's the Flash Moonlight Vigil, though, from LWX. Oh my god, the damage, but not quite enough as Yanja gets rocket grabbed and a double kill comes through for Khan. Ah, it's, it's a bit of an int off here for both of these teams. <laughs> as we're going to check this one out once again. This was uh, possibly done? just the bait. Was this a solo kill from Nine? Must have been a oh, that sleep. <laughs> The oh angle perfect. My God, Knight's and pretty good at this game, I, isn't he? I guess he must have picked up some items because he really just uh, destroyed that Renekton in one shot. I like uh, what Doinby did here. It's actually enough to get Jackie Love down low enough so that Khan could just flash kill him. And there's nothing that Yanja was going to do there. And what is Top Lucian uh, going to do also? Top Lucian. Yeah. <laughs> Showing off his stuff. I think, like, if if it was Aatrox instead, is Anything. that ever worse <laughs> in any way? I mean, it. Yeah, I, th I think that's fine. Yeah, I don't know. He might have had a slightly harder time in the lane, but I guess I mean, so. still the Lucian is fine, so it doesn't really change anything in that case. As top Esports still in the lead after that little. You know, yeah, they had a soiree into. Yeah. Dance, it's a, you know, gifting things over as Yanja gets the flash hook. Okay. All too easy. That's oh. the pick potential at this stage of the game for top esports. Yep. No one is safe if you are outside of your turret range, guys. And uh, Knight well and truly online as well. 1 0 and 5. Uh, this guy just like. Just always has a good early game. Yeah, his mechanics too are, they just always seemingly on points, regardless of what champion he's playing. I mean, he's played four different champions now, right? He played Syndra, yeah. Oriana. What was the second game? Uh, Cork? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, it was. And he's 100% loss rate, I think, on Cork so far this, <laughs> this uh, yeah, tournament. It's like the only thing that he loses on is his Corky. Oh, he's well known for it. Shirley has a very sore head. Uh, at the moment, after getting a couple of charges. A lot of extra money, though, as you can see. 369 now towards the top side. He's going to be taking down this inner turret. Doinby is by himself, bottom lane, no teleport. And uh, therefore, top esports are going to have complete run of the jungle over here. Even Kasa farming in the face of the Nidalee that's a level ahead of him. Agatha runs back to her little perch there. As uh, we're going to have a bit of a reset at the top. And Ocean Soul is upon us this game. A couple more of those for top esports to lock that one down. Two and a half minutes time for that one to be up. Yeah, it would be pretty nice for the poke comp that uh, top esports do have. Another, you know, this is like from so far away. Right? Yeah. This is like 200 light years away, right? It's it's from the other side of the map where Zoe's just like, oh yeah, you remember me? I'm a, I'm a pretty fun champion. Yeah, I, and yeah, Tiana's just like not having fun on this Nidalee. He regrets this Nidalee pick so much now. Well, I mean, this is the problem with Nidalee, right? She's such a feast or famine pick. It is, yeah. It's a real gamble uh, because if you don't have the early game that uh, Kanabi had in every single game that he played this champion, you are basically not a champion, right? Just because you are based on being able to, uh, to skirmish and do a lot of damage. As, uh, as a champ that doesn't really offer too much utility outside of having an Athene's. Uh, but that's not even what he's building, right? Because Tian needs damage in order to be relevant in the first place and then can build it for the utility is Khan. Acceleration gate Ooh. and the hook under the turret. The Fate's Call exists. And that means that uh, Yu Yan is going to be absolutely fine as Crisp. <laughs> Gonna get hit by Hello. the bubble, and uh, the double body block comes through, but 369 there with the culling. And uh, just zoning away three people on this yeah. Lucian. Lucian's looking, you know, okay now. <laughs> I don't like, think this game has to do anything to do with Lucian, to <laughs> be honest, my dude. I'm memeing. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, this is a good pick now. I'm actually uh, scared. I don't want people to think that Lucian is good because of this game, because yeah. he's going to win, you know? Because it's still bad. It's still not a good idea yeah. to pick that A lot one. of other champions would have provided so much more. I mean, yeah. the Orn... I'm not sure if the Orn was available. I think it got banned. No, I did get banned. Yeah. yeah. Orn could have been good. Orn Wukong were banned, I think, in the second round. Yeah, as, uh, Khan right. easily picks up the red buff. Thanks to all these guys. Yeah. 
And I don't know what happened. This 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 feels like the second or third time this series where top esports get ahead and then all of a sudden FPX like kind of just lose their their grip on the game. They start yeah. just running into the enemy team when they're behind, looking for plays that aren't supposed to work. And top esports are just much more collected as a team and they're just playing very calmly and much better, you know, just straight up. And it, it, it feels like these mid games are just so one sided because of that. And that kind of feels like the way we are seeing this game play out once again. As 369, really good, just saying, okay, I don't know exactly where they are. They could be in my jungle. I have to respect all vision because I have none. And he's just able to avoid any kind of gank. And that's all that Tian can really do now. He's like, if I can just lock down one person, you know, get a shutdown for my Renekton or for myself, you know, maybe I could come back and begin to do some burst damage in this game, but it's just not meant to be. 369 is playing too smart in this top side. Yep, walking over control world, decides he doesn't want to take that one down as Khan lying in wait. Not a lot of vision available here for top esports, as you can see, so that's why 369 took the most safe route. And he's going to be absolutely fine here as well. Soul point now for top esports. Four and a half minutes as they got a free dragon. Now Khan's going to dive onto 369. Now maybe he's overextended, but Khan's taking a lot of damage here. The culling interrupted pretty immediately as Kasa comes in, puts down the pillar, but would have liked that actually against Khan. Going to possibly subjugate him to death. Remember that buff lasts for a long time. It does get some speedy ground. <laughs> okay. And then on the back end, that's a very dead TM. That was a one shot. To, to four deaths now. Yeah. And now Baron has been alive for 30 seconds. And uh, Top Esports wants to say that that's enough time for Baron to be alive. And we'll just take that. They easily have the damage. They will be able to pick up this Baron. FPX knows it. They're just going to split push. But it's just really intelligent play once again by 369. It's He knows that if they're there, that they're going to clean up too because his teammates were there to back him up now. You know, earlier on when he was playing very passively, he didn't have support. Strategic they were actually, Yeah, they, they were waited waiting for, 369, for the yeah. Lucian. That's very smart as well. So it's, you know, it's, it is kind of strategic in thing. It's, it's waiting. <laughs> he gets in their face. He, he doesn't know exactly if they're still there, but if they are, Oh my He's God! Like, okay, uh, they're gonna die anyway, even if I die. I'm so sorry, Papa Smithy, but it's tactical inting. Yes. <laughs> He's already come up with the term. This exists. Tactical inting. Very good. Ah, he's out Papa as well. We should know that. Oh, Khan's gonna get exhausted. Oh. Played back, destroyed. The Ren set's coming on in. Spade's call comes down. Casa does get the tribute. So he's going to be absolutely fine. Zoe picks up the kill on the Aphelios. It's a double for Jackie Love, and they're going to just the barrel the down this top lane exactly. I don't know whether Tian's going to be able to help out, and Doinby nowhere to be seen. Finally teleports back. But this mini wave is just going to be carried forwards. 369 just going to kill Tian, but he does go golden. Buys a few extra seconds, and it looks like the minion wave is where Doinby's going just to try and get some backdoor bonus for these Nexus turrets. Good play. Yeah. He's going to try and buy some time there. LWX available in another five seconds. Thankfully, it's 22 minutes into the game, so the death timers are actually very short. <laughs> yeah. And Doinby continues his merry jaunt towards the top side of the map. Doinby's play is going to save the game here. If he just dies in the front and they have a minion wave with Baron buff, top esports can probably just focus down the turrets in the Nexus, but it's not going to happen that way. <laughs> Even if Doinby dies here, it's like, okay. I mean, the fact that they're chasing him this whole way is actually genius. As he's going to have slice, he's going to have die. Zoom in. Uh, he's dead now, but that took a long time. <laughs> Poor Renekton. You, you did it for your team. Well done. Yep. Let's have a look at how this all unfolded. Wallet's pretty heavy. Khan says, I'm, I'm pillared. He shouldn't be in range to get pillared there. Like, that's, you know, that's what their comp does, right? You're going to get pillared, then you're going to get bubbled, then you're going to get played. So you just can't get in range if you're by yourself. Once he gets pillared, he has to jump in, so it looks silly. And it, it was just kind of like the dominoes falling one after the other. And I love how the Observer highlights this. He says, hey, you know, it's not about... 369 picking up a kill on some Italy that has zero armor. It's about uh, doing be keeping this game alive. Yeah, by when hiding those minions away. It's so desperate right now, even so. I mean, it's an 8,000 gold lead at 23 minutes. But still, he keeps it alive. He gives them a chance, even if it's a tiny one. Well, Bubble not going to find the target, but you can throw out so much non committal CC here on the side of top esports. They're 8,000 gold in the lead. Certainly staring down the barrel of a 3-1 victory over the 2019 World Champions. This top esports squad is 
I don't know. They've really come alive since Jackie Love joined the team. Now really starting to prove themselves a superpower of the LPL. Will be phenomenal to watch uh, during the summer season, starting in a few weeks' time. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly in this tournament, they are playing the best by far. I mean, JDG didn't really show up. You know, they, they kind of got crushed by FPX in the semifinals. As another hook. Yep, Kasi gets hooked up. He's got Subjugate, though. Not going to flash because he doesn't have it available. Going to be getting taken down low as Jackie Love trying to bounce around. Avoids the pounce. Stays alive for so damn long. And in the meantime, gets a couple of kills. It was taken down Yu Yanja. Still alive as Khan's underneath his turret. Knight blocking so that Yu Yanja could get back. And 369 is going to taxi this minion wave forward. Yu Yanja was tanking that turret. Probably didn't want to there as... Uh, 369 is booped around. Khan is going to escape. Doinby able to lock that one down as Knight does have himself the skirmishes and he's going to utilize it there onto Doinby, who's burning down to that red buff as the minions doing some work. Cull the Meat comes in. There's the ace that Knight delivers to FPX. He hasn't died yet. His Magi's is well and truly stacking up yeah. at this point. He's pulled one every game. That's Speak the kind of, of play item. we want. And uh, this is why you pick Blitzcrank. Uh, even when you're really far behind, you can almost win team fights if you just eliminate one person right away. Uh, unfortunately, even with Aphelios getting insane AoE damage with everybody bunched up, it didn't matter. And it was 4v5. Yeah, Lucian wasn't even there. He was split pushing the bottom side. And then kind of looked silly there at the end. He dies. Goembi, who is desperately trying to carry his team. Unfortunately, FPX aren't quite letting him do that here, as it's, yeah. uh, it's been pretty one-sided here so far. The Ocean Soul <laughs> is on the cards. 21 stacks. Yeah, he's, you know, he's just a casual 5-0-11, never mind. Knight is, like, always playing in... He's, like, always smurfing solo queue when he plays, <laughs> somehow, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Even against the world champions of 2019. He's like, ah, oh, you know, they're okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just bite Magi's every single game. No big deal. Except the Corky game. I think he did, by the way. All, all yeah. the other three games that yep. he has won. Just showing, you know, how much value that item can have. Especially Remember, from only one Nexus turret as well. Baron's going to be up in 40 seconds time. Ocean Soul is, of course, here. Um, I don't know whether we even mentioned that. Too much craziness was happening. Uh, but it's going to be in the top esports. It's going to be basically impossible to kill in a team fight. And here is said team fight. Chris gets taken down extremely low. Gravitum does some work as Moonlight Vigil did land. But uh, Top Esports move back. They use their, you know, global war mogs that all of them have with this Ocean Soul. Knight with the oh. Shirelias is very scary. Tian gets moved. As Khan now down to about half health. The last next turret going to go down. And this could just be the MSC Championship right here, right now for Top Esports. We're witnessing the birth of some new contenders for the World Championship here as Top Esports will win the Mid-Season Cup, but not before they've uh, taken a few glory kills. And there it is. Still, the FPX flares will fly. They were defeating the FPX. Looks like they should be.